Look, I don't care at this point, okay? I'm losing money left and right. My antipsychotics ain't working today. A dog just turned over my trash can, and nobody's buying my Dixie NFT. Come on, you've got 250000 in your back pocket. Give me! So needless to say, I don't feel like reviewing garbage games I don't care about. So today, you're going to sit there, you're going to watch this video, and I'm going to review games from a series that I actually give a shit about. This video's for me, not you. If it gets zero views, it gets zero views. I need this. I need games about what most people consider the worst Disney afternoon cartoon, but to me was my childhood. Bonkers. So what the hell is Bonkers? Well, it's complicated. But basically, Bonkers was a show that was supposed to be a show about Roger Rabbit, but after a whole bunch of copyright bullshit that never got figured out, the creators said fuck it and made their own show with a similar idea to Roger Rabbit and that cartoons and humans live together. Bonkers started out as a set of shorts on a show called Raw Tunage and then became its own show. Bonkers himself is a bobcat voiced by Jim Cummings, who is a police officer that takes care of crime and cases pertaining to cartoons. There's two different seasons of Bonkers where he has a different partner, Lucky Piquel or Miranda Wright. The reason for that is its own story, but basically Bonkers is a cop tunes call when they need help. Now, I was gonna go into this big thing about how much I love this show and how I think it still holds up today, but then I realized I haven't watched it since I was a kid, so I watched it again. And holy shit, I got a severe migraine after only two minutes. Dear God, was it always that annoying? It's like way too fast-paced with a bunch of screaming and ranting random tunes gibberish. I have to say, I definitely don't like it anymore, and don't know why I liked it as a kid. That was just a bunch of cartoons having gay sex. Oh well, I still like Bonkers himself, and he was a part of my childhood. Hell, he's the reason Dixie is a bobcat. It's all this little fucker's fault. But enough about the show, we're here to talk about the games, and that is going to be extremely easy for me, because there's only three Bonkers games, so I only have to suffer three times. Now I know what you're all thinking. Bubsy is a bobcat too. Does Bonkers have better games than Bubsy? Do Rednecks fuck their cousins? Bonkers on the Super Nintendo. Oh boy, Sonic 3D Blast was on the Super Nintendo and that was great. And you know what? This game is freaking awesome. You know why? Because it's a Capcom game. The same people that made Gotcha Force. The Nobody? Oh. So a bunch of Toon treasures were stolen from a museum, and Bonkers has to go out and kick some Toon ass and plow some Toonussie. This game is a simple 2D platformer, and it doesn't claim to be anything else but that. You got a dash attack that you can charge up, and also bombs that you can throw. The main way you attack is you jump on an enemy's head. You've got hit points that can be increased by finding hearts throughout the level. They increase your maximum health. Sometimes you can find a potion to drink that gives you infinite dash and invincibility. And I'm not doing a a very good job at showing it off. Oh look, it's the candle dildo guy from Beauty and the Bestiality. Time to meet Jesus. Hey, what's this say? Ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-ab-
Oh, that's just dirty. I like Bonkers' walk cycle. He looks like the happiest little shit in the world. Look at this shit they pulled here. They put a one-up and a bomb down here for you to collect, but they put a cactus at the end so you'd get hurt. That's like giving a kid an apple and putting a razor blade in it, which I tend to do. Next boss, and it's a couple of bird guys. Oh. Well, I guess I'll get fucked then. That conveyor belt's the real boss of this level. So the idea is you have to knock one of them off the conveyor belt, and then you gotta knock the other one off the spotlights and then off the conveyor belt. But the whole time he's throwing bombs and banana peels at you. This boss isn't too hard. The worst part about it is waiting for your dash to charge back up so you can hit the button and knock the spotlights down. Not too hard at all. Can be done fairly easily. I wonder where those bottomless pits go in games. Are the enemies just forever falling in limbo? Dude, this is a totally deep hole. Yeah! This level kind of pissed me off because there's neon signs that are in the way and they shock you if you touch them. And then, and then, baby, baby, baby. And in some instances, it's really hard to avoid them because they don't stand out. They just look like some of the scenery, but they put them all over the place and it's so easy to touch them. When you game over, you get sent to this screen where you have to laugh at this guy's joke in order to get it continue. Did you hear the one about the guy who put instant coffee in the microwave? He went back in time. I I, I don't get it. I think I could come up with a better joke. The existence of a power shovel implies the existence of a submissive hoe. <laughs> Bonkers has the energy of a submissive hoe, but he could be a power shovel for all I know. You know what? Let's go to Fur Affinity. First thing I see is inflation. I hate the internet. Why can't you people have normal fetishes like paws? Paws never hurt nobody. This handbag has a fetish for being a little shit. He moves around so fast it's hard to get a good shot at him with my bombs. Seriously, fuck these handbags. They were such a nuisance. Na nuisance? It ain't bad enough you're a nuisance, you're a na nuisance. Then there was this part where I was on a road and I had to hop on top of cars and watch out for signs. And I kept smacking into the signs. <laughs> The next big boss I had to fight was a helicopter, helicopter. The helicopter was tricky. I had to try to hit him with a bomb before he would use an attack, or else he would shower me with bombs. Then there was this other guy, I don't know what his problem was. But after enough bombs, the helicopter fucked off. Then I go to this other level where I get bombarded by birds with brown eggs. They're literally throwing their unborn children at me. This would be the equivalent of a pregnant woman throwing her funky fetus at me. This freezer section right here brings you death in 36 flavors. You've got penguins that charge at you, you've got frozen swordfish that drop down on you, and you've got gas pipes. It's good to know that everything around you wants to kill you. The very air you're breathing could have cancer cells in it right now. You may be dying as we speak. While the cancer slowly kills you from the inside, a piano falls on your head, ha! Huh? This may have been the easiest boss in the whole game. You hit him, he blows wind at you, you walk back up to him, throw another bomb at him, and that's it. You know, you would think at some point doing this thing over and over, he would think, you know, this ain't working, maybe I should try something else, but no. Truly the definition of insanity. So here's the obligatory sewer level. The sewer level can eat a dick. I got stuck in this one little spot with this alligator and I couldn't figure out how to get back out again. Luckily when I respawned, it put me somewhere else. Oh, I haven't mentioned this guy yet. This is Fall Apart Rabbit. He's from the show. If you hit him with a bomb, he gives you a one-up. If you physically abuse your friend, you get free stuff. Also, you can travel through these pipes. This part sucks. The current is moving you around. You have to jump over to the other side, but the current is making your jump slower. And sometimes you'll jump so slow you can't make it over to the other side. This whole damn level just pissed me off something fierce. Shit, I wish I was doing something fun right now, like listening to Crocus. Don't get me wrong, I like this game, but this is the weakest level in the game and I can't stand it. But what I hate the most is these damn switches that you have to dash on. So these switches open a door, but only for a short period so you have to haul ass to get over there to the door and it gives you just barely enough time to make it there's current in this water and i have to dash and jump up to hit the switch but half the time i try it it doesn't work like what the hell why won't it let me hit the switch i don't know what the hell i'm doing wrong but every time i try to dash on this switch it doesn't work and then finally just somehow it just magically works i still don't know what the hell was up with that but it just adds to the whole thing of this is the only level that gave me any real trouble. And, and then, then this, this 
shit. shit. There's shit falling from the ceiling. The floor is crumbling. There's enemies trying to kill you. It's all together not a Merry Brady Christmas. So this time I try to be careful. I dash across here. I stop for a moment, let the things fall down. Then I dash again. And oh no, I bump into one enemy and another kills me. I ran out all my lives twice trying to do this shit. What a horrible level this is in such a perfectly good game. Now I gotta hear more of his shitty jokes. What's the last thing that goes through a bug's mind when it hits the windshield? His hind legs. Man, you're about as funny as a funeral. After those jokes, I could watch Hachiko and laugh my ass off. And after you get past that, you need to get past these dudes on these little buckets that look like those little things from Mega Man. Probably on purpose. Then you fight this guy who seems just like a Robotnik boss fight. You have to throw bombs at him and then jump on that red thing on top of the robot. Do that a few times and you got him. Now the game makes you think that this guy is the final boss, but it turns out he's not. You've got one more stage and one more boss to do. This stage has got a bunch of springy things that throw you around like a fucking frisbee, but you can use them to your advantage to speed run through the stage. Just look how far it throws me, man. That needs to be a mode of transportation. Something just slingshoots you to where you want to go. The good news is this stage is really short and you get to the final boss really quick. With this boss, he holds his hands up and you gotta get to the side where he's not holding his hand up so you can throw a bomb in his face. But through all that, you gotta dodge lightning, lasers, the debris he throws when you hit him, and the enemies that keep spawning. It's a long, grueling fight to keep stuff from flying in your face, but it can be done, and it probably can be done quite easily. You defeat him, he gives back the treasures, but he says he's going to stop time forever, but Bonkers keeps him from doing that by saying thank you for giving back the treasures. And he changes his mind, and thus Bonkers saves the fucking world. And with that, that is the end. End of Bonkers for the Super Nintendo. It's a great game, solid three out of five. Check that shit out, man. But we are not done yet because there are two more Bonkers games. Now there's a lot less to say about these so we can cut these out pretty quick. Bonkers on the Sega Genesis was developed by Sega themselves and is altogether a different game. This game is actually a collection of four different mini games. The first one's got you throwing donuts at enemies to make sure they don't get close to the treasures in front of you. You just move left and right, throw all the donuts until you kill all the enemies. Each mini game has 10 stages and and somewhere in the middle of all that, you get to do a bonus stage. Uh, pretend I didn't do that. After the 10th stage, you get a little animation of you capturing the boss. You don't actually fight the boss? That's kind of shit. That's like a Mario game where you don't fight Bowser. Or a Metal Gear game that doesn't leave you sexually confused. The second stage is something shooting shit at you and you gotta build a wall to cover it up. That's right. We're gonna build a massive wall all around Hollywood and keep that junk out of our country. You get the fuck out of here, you fucking Hollywood sons of bitches. What? Well, it's obvious I suck at impressions. Anyway, you wall this guy up like Henry from Thomas the Tank Engine. That's the end of that. Okay, let's try this bonus stage again and see if I can, like, not die. I'm so good at games! There's really no challenge to this at all. You just build a wall. They should have give you like a time limit or something to make it more challenging. This is kind of boring. And it ain't much different from the donut throwing level. And it's over just as soon as it began. Why don't you build a wall around some bitches? The third one has you putting together pieces of fall apart rabbit so he can defuse a bomb. You have to bash these crates to find the pieces. Now some of the crates will jump to tell you that there's a piece in it. But this game has a difficulty set. So I wonder if this game doesn't do that in the harder difficulties. There's also rats. Oh no, not rats. And there's also Jack in the Boxes that try to kill you. Guys, is it Jack in the Boxes or is it Jacks in the Box? Or would Jacks in the Box imply that there's several Jacks inside one box? Or maybe it's both. It's Jacks in the Boxes. That's gonna keep me up tonight. The last one is this Spy Hunter shit where you have to try to crash the other cars. Some of them you can stop by using this cartoon gum that sticks them to the road, but some of them you have to use oil slick or literally crash into them. Then after you crash all the cars, you have to fight this tow truck at the end. And once you defeat him, the stage is over. I'd say this was the most fun out of all the mini games, but that's not saying much. It's like doing your taxes is more fun than going to jail. But there is something oddly satisfying about smacking into the other cars. Honestly makes me want to play Burnout. I'm Burnout on this game. But you know the good news? This is the last stage. There's no fifth stage. There's no final boss. Once you beat all the mini 
many games you won the game. And that's bonkers on the Sega Genesis. It's over as soon as it began. It's not bad. It's just not as good as the Super Nintendo one. And it's really lacking in content. Last game, bonkers wax up on the Sega Game Gear. This will be the first time we've played a Game Gear game on this channel. So you run around this level collecting pickles, I assume? And you have to find all of them to go to the next stage. I'm sure this makes a whole lot more sense if I had the manual. But then again, Bonkers was always pretty nonsensical. I would have more to say about this game if there was more to say about this game. It's kind of boring, honestly. You run around collecting pickles, there's a radar on the pause menu that tells you where they are. Don't get hit by the enemies. That's it. I mean, I'll give it a little bit of slack. It's a Game Gear game, so I shouldn't expect very much out of it and <clears throat> you know personally i have pretty high standards when it comes to video games <clears throat> says the man that likes bio mutant this gave me a good chuckle though oh my goodness this is awful and that is the bonkers games they only ever made three i hope you didn't mind me just indulging in something that i cared about if you did don't worry i got some better stuff lined up well if you like what you saw you ought to consider being a patron for five dollars a month you get to see the videos before anybody else does you get your name on the board and you get a Discord. You can also get your name on the board for just one dollar. And you'll have my absolute thanks if you do. Well, that's it. This is Working Man Games. I'm Stuart K. Riley. Y'all have a good day.